Hi everyone and welcome to lecture two of the special three-part module on sponsorship, image rights and tax. Now the focus of this lecture is going to be on image rights. My name is Tom Murray and I'm an associate in the sports group at Mishcons. I also head up the Mishcon Sports Law Academy. Now over the next 20 minutes we're going to be running through the following questions. Number one, what is image rights? Number two, why are they important? Number three, what are image rights agreements? Number four, why do players and football clubs enter into image rights agreements? And number five, how do image rights structures work? Okay, so let's start off with the fundamentals. What are image rights? It's quite hard to pin down a concrete definition of image rights. This is because unlike other jurisdictions like France or the US, English law doesn't actually recognize a standalone concept of image rights. And what this means is that there's no single statute or piece of legislation that affords protections for these types of rights. Instead, image rights under English law are protected by a patchwork of overlapping laws, including privacy law, such as the Human Rights Act, data protection law, such as GDPR, intellectual property, including copyright, trademarks, and the right to sue for passing off, and finally, contract law. Now, we could run a session on each of these areas of law, but for now, I want you to think about image rights and the legal measures to protect them as a bundle of sticks. Each stick represents an individual right, which when collected together, affords certain legal protections to athletes. It is this bundle of rights that we're talking about when we speak of image rights. In basic terms, the term image rights refers to an individual's proprietary rights in their personality, to prevent the unauthorized use of things such as their name, their nickname, their likeness, and even things like their signature or their biometric data. When drafting or reviewing sponsorship deals, playing contracts, or any other agreement where one party wants to make use of an athlete's image, it's important to carefully check the definition of image rights. Now, the key thing to remember here is that often image rights cover a lot more than the athlete's name and likeness. Some sponsorship deals that I've advised on, including with the likes of Adidas and Puma, include much broader definitions and include stuff like an athlete's tattoos and their animated portrayal. Now, the reason you need to be careful here is that often an athlete may not want to give a sponsor or a team the right to exploit these characteristics commercially. Okay, so now we know what image rights are, but why are they important? There are two key reasons why image rights are important. The first is that they prevent people from using your name and your likeness without your consent. This means that a brand can be stopped from commercially exploiting your image without your permission. Image rights also allow you as an athlete to license the use of your image in return for a fee. Image rights are therefore the basis of all sponsorship and endorsement deals. Now, whilst image rights are important in all sports, in my experience, they tend to come up most often in football. In the early 1990s, upon the creation of the Premier League, people started to realise that a player's overall commercial value to a club may far exceed their on-field ability. Now let's take someone like David Beckham towards the end of his career. Whilst he may not have been the best player on the pitch, his value overall to his club and their sponsors was huge. Sport is no longer about having the best players or athletes, although this certainly does help. Clubs are now increasingly interested in how they can use an athlete's international image and their Instagram following to boost their global reach. Now let's take someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, for example. As of November 2020, he has 242 million followers on Instagram. Juventus, the club for which he plays, have only 44.4 million, and I have just over 2,000. When Juventus signed Ronaldo back in 2018, they weren't just signing a world-class player. They were signing a brand which they could use to enhance the profile of the club. Now, it goes without saying that clubs, and more importantly, their sponsors, want to have their best known players at the front and centre of their advertising and marketing campaigns, and often use image rights agreements to achieve this. Now, let's say you're Tottenham Hotspur. You want Harry Kane to be the central person in all of your advertising. Tottenham would want to use Kane's image when launching the club kit, in the club shop, across their commercial and social channels, and in conjunction with particular existing club sponsors and partners. But why? Well, better players means better exposure. Better exposure means more money, and often more money means more success. 
but how do clubs ensure that they have the ability to use a player's image to fulfill their obligations with sponsors? Well, they enter into image rights agreements. For the next bit of today's talk, we're going to be focused on what are image rights agreements. In football, an image rights agreement is a contract between a club and a player, or a player's image rights company, that governs how a club and its sponsors can use a player's image, and who has control over such use. An image rights agreement sits alongside a player's contract, and enhances the limited rights that clubs have to use a player's image to promote the club and their sponsors. Now, under the standard Premier League contract, players have to make themselves available for promotional, community and public relations activities for up to six hours a week. All players in the Premier League sign up to the same legal terms using a standard form contract. Now, this six hours is split between PR and community appearances and promotional activities. So what this means is that clubs only have approximately three hours for their commercial partners and for marketing. For many clubs, this is seen as insufficient, particularly for star players or where clubs have a significant number of commercial partners. Now let's take Man United as an example. As well as having an official kit supplier in Adidas, a kit sponsor in Chevrolet, they also have an official carrier, an official tyre partner, an official medical systems partner, an official wine partner, an official logistics partner, and even an official global lubricant partner. Now that's a lot of partners who want to have access to the club's players. Without an image rights agreement in place with key players, it would be difficult for Manchester United to satisfy their obligations with sponsors. Another feature of the standard Premier League contract is that it imposes limits on a club's use of a particular player's image. A club is not permitted to use a single player's image greater than the average for all players regularly in the club's first team. This is often why in adverts, such as Liverpool's advert with Nivea, a number of different players are featured. This prevents someone from inferring that any brand or product is endorsed by a particular player as opposed to being endorsed by the club. But why are these limitations in place? Well, what they do is that they stop clubs from focusing all of their commercial activities around one player or one group of players. Given the restrictions that exist both in terms of time and usage, you can see why a club may wish to enter an image rights agreement with some or all of their players. By paying players an additional fee on top of their salary, in return, clubs received enhanced rights, such as additional promotional appearances, greater usage of certain players, and often things like access to their social media data. Now, the key point here is that image rights contracts are used by clubs to further monetize their most valuable assets, their players. Another benefit of image rights agreements is that they prevent players from working with competitors of the club's sponsors. Now let's take Chelsea as an example here. Chelsea are sponsored by the likes of three, Cadbury's and Carabao. When signing up players to image rights agreements, Chelsea may require the players not to promote competitors such as O2, Nestle and Red Bull. Now this keeps their sponsors on side, but what it does do is it limits the commercial opportunities open to players, which is why the club will often pay the player an additional fee. So now we know what image rights are and why they're important. We've also looked at image rights agreements in the context of football and why clubs and players enter into image rights agreements. For the final part of today's lecture, we're going to give a basic overview of image rights structures. Rather than licensing the exploitation of their image themselves, Many players and athletes assign the rights in their image, their name and their likeness to what's called an image rights company. For those of you who don't know, an assignment is the legal term for the transfer of rights from one person to another. An image rights company will often only have one shareholder and one director, and often this is the player. Although sometimes image rights companies can include members of the player's family. The company has what's called separate legal personality and is set up to protect and separately manage the exploitation of a player's image. Now, there are three key advantages of having a separate legal entity to manage a player's image. These are limited liability, contract management, and tax. To start off, let's talk about limited liability. The image rights company will be a separate legal personality to the player and have what's known as limited liability. This means that if the company incurs significant debts or is subject to legal actions, those pursuing the company cannot go after the assets of the, of the player, except in very limited circumstances. This means that if the company sued or runs out of money, 
The creditors could not go after the player's personal assets, such as his car or his house. The second advantage is contract management. If a player has multiple endorsement and sponsorship agreements, then employees can sometimes be hired by the IRC or the image rights company to ensure that neither the image rights company or the player breach their existing endorsement agreements and fulfill their obligations with sponsors. Now let's take someone like Jose Mourinho as an example. Mourinho has sponsorship and endorsement deals with brands including Heineken, Hublot, Adidas and Jaguar. Now each of these brands will want Jose to take part in promotional activities and appearance days. Sometimes an image rights company can be used to employ an individual to manage these types of opportunities. The final advantage of having a separate image rights company is tax, but I'm gonna leave that to Safris to explain in part three of this lecture. So we've just highlighted three potential benefits of image rights structures, but sometimes these can cause problems for players. Last year, it was reported that Dybala's transfer from Juventus to Tottenham fell through due to an unresolvable issue with his image rights. The press noted that Star Image, a third-party marketing company, paid Dybala to acquire his image rights. In exchange, Dybala undertook commercial activity on behalf of the company with a range of brands, including Samsung, Gatorade, and Adidas. But why would this cause a problem? Well, where a player does not control an image rights company because they've sold them to, to a third party that they don't control, this creates an additional hurdle for transfers. Rather than simply negotiating with a player, or more likely the player's agent, a buying club needs to also negotiate with the image rights company. Now, no matter how talented a player is, if a club cannot use a player's image for their commercial partners, this creates an obvious problem. Tottenham may have wanted to impose restrictions on the player's personal image rights options. For example, Spurs may have wanted to ensure that the player could not endorse any insurance company or car manufacturer, even in a personal capacity. This is because the Spurs are sponsored by AIA and Audi. If the image rights company owned by Dybala or connected to Dybala was to disagree with this or wanted additional payments from Spurs for the loss of commercial opportunities, you can see how this could cause additional problems. Now, this Dybala example is very much the outlier as most players own the company that exploits those image rights. And it's also based on information as it's been reported in the press. Nonetheless, as image rights structures become more complicated, commercial solutions for off-field commercial matters will be important to consider when dealing with multi-million pound transfers. So this takes us to the end of lecture two of module two of the Sports Law Academy. Now let's take a quick recap of the points we covered in this seminar. We started off by explaining that image rights refer to an individual's proprietary right in their personality to prevent the unauthorized use of things such as their name, their nickname, their likeness. We also noted it was important to carefully check the definition of image rights used in sponsorship agreements. For part two, we then touched on two reasons why image rights are important. Number one, they prevent people using your name and your likeness about your consent. And number two, they allow you as an athlete to license the use of your image in return for a fee. We then moved on to talk about image rights agreements and explained that this is a contract between a club and a player or a player's image rights company that governs how a club and its sponsors can use a player's image. We noted that image rights agreements enhance the limited rights that clubs have to use a player's image to promote the club and their sponsors under the standard Premier League contract. They provide clubs with additional promotional appearances, greater usage of certain players, and even things like access to players' social media data. And finally, image rights agreements prevent players from entering into individual endorsement deals with competitors of the club sponsors. For the final part of the session, we looked at image rights structures, which is where a company with a separate legal personality is set up to protect and separately manage the exploitation of a player's image. We noted that there are three key advantages of having a separate legal entity to manage a player's image rights. Number one, limited liability. Number two, contract management. And number three, tax. Thank you for taking part in this lecture. For the final lecture of this module, we'll be joined by Pete Hackleton and Reese Linnell of specialist accountancy firm Safi Champions. Thanks for watching.